And the whole time I just kept picturing that scene that everyone's obsessed with with Pedro Pascal where he's like, why don't you ride a real cowboy sugar? Hi there, my name is Catherine. I hope you're doing well. Today's going to be my wrap up of everything I read in February. I'm not gonna lie. It was a pretty underwhelming month. It started off strong and then just started to go a bit downhill. I've not had a five star read yet this year. And I am, to be fair, very picky about my five stars. It's not shocking, but it doesn't mean it's not disappointing too. <laughs> but let's get into it. Let's start off on a positive note. I finished the Broken Earth trilogy. I read the first book, the fifth season, back at the end of November, I want to say. And then I got the other two books for my Christmas, The Obelisk Gate and The Stone Sky. I loved the fifth season and I was so excited to finish the series. I was so happy that it was a series that was already out and that had a lot of hype surrounding it that it definitely lived up to. I have talked about the fifth season quite a lot, but I'll just give you a quick summary of what it's about. This trilogy the Broken Earth trilogy takes place in an apocalyptic fantasy world which is under constant threat from environmental disaster. In this world there are certain people who have the ability to manipulate the earth which is a gift and a curse at the same time. Because this makes them so powerful the rest of society have oppressed and ostracized them and used them as tools shunning them from society and manufacturing this completely false idea that they are not human. In the first book in this series we follow the perspectives of three women in this world, a young girl, a young adult woman and a middle-aged woman who are in different stages of their life but who are all victims of this oppression. I can't really get into what these two books are about without completely spoiling the first book so I'm not going to. I will say though this series is completely worth the hype that it has received. I loved it so much. It's one of the most unique sci-fi fantasy series I've ever read. The world building is incredible. The amount of detail Jemison has put into this world without writing any info dumps that are a slog to get through is astounding. Her writing style is so unique and powerful. Having read all three books, I think the first one is definitely my favourite, but this is a series that definitely relies on all three books to appreciate the story she has created. We start getting new perspectives in the second and third one which I think can sometimes be a bit of a flop but really enhances these books. The third one especially. The third one is where you really learn about the world and how it came to be. Actually the third one might be my favourite. I don't know because I couldn't have enjoyed the third one as much without the setup of the first one but the third one you get the answers you've been waiting for for so long and it pays off. It's so, so good. At the heart of these books, it's really a story about motherhood and the bond between a mother and a child, the lengths a mother will go to to protect their child. There are really difficult subject matters discussed in this series and it's just handled with so much care. It's honestly beautiful, one of the most beautiful series I've ever read. So the next book I read, I actually read in between the second and third books in that series. Just for a nice little palette cleanser, I read Bride by Ali Hazelwood if you want my full in-depth reactions to me reading Bride, I do have a video where I read all of Ali Hazelwood's work for the first time, including Bride at the end. Bride is Ali Hazelwood's first paranormal romance. She normally writes contemporary romance with a focus on STEM science. And I was intrigued going into Bride, one, to see how she would adapt her writing style for this different genre, and two, because I don't read a lot of paranormal romance. It's not really my niche. And after reading Bride, I think I know why. <laughs> Bride wasn't a bad book but I just think this genre isn't really for me. The story basically follows a vampire named Misery whose father is kind of head of the vampires in this world and she is set up in an arranged marriage with an alpha wolf, werewolf, 
named Lo in order to bridge some peace between the species. In this world there's vampires, humans and werewolves. But she has an ulterior motive for marrying Lo because her best friend who is a human went missing recently and she has reason to believe that Lo has something to do with it. So she basically has married Lo to try and find her best friend. So we've got a bit of a mystery going on there but it's mainly to do with this romance between Lo and Misery. There were parts I liked but overall I just find it quite lacklustre and boring. The romance took ages to kick off and when it did kick off I just didn't feel any chemistry between the two characters. Lo has a little sister in it and I liked Misery's relationship with his little sister. She doesn't really love children so that was quite an interesting dynamic seeing her become protective over this child. The reveal at the end to do with the mystery <laughs> felt unearned and a bit silly for me but like I said I just don't think I'm a big paranormal romance fan. I don't think there's anything wrong with Ali Hazelwood's writing in it necessarily. I think this is purely a taste thing because I really enjoyed her other contemporary romance books. So it's not going to put me off reading more Ali Hazelwood at all and if she continues like experimenting with the kind of genres she writes in I'm more than open to read more. This one was just a bit of a miss for me. Next I read None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell which is a thriller and I devoured this. This book follows two women Josie and Alex. Alex is a successful podcaster. She's had a really successful podcast in which she interviews successful women and Josie is a stay-at-home mom um, slash housewife and their lives collide with each other on their 45th birthday in which they realise that they are birthday twins so, so they share the same birthday at the same age and they were even born in the same hospital. Josie latches on to this and approaches Alex with a podcast idea where she wants to basically upend her life and completely start fresh. She's not really happy with her husband. She has two children, one who left home and disappeared from their lives at 16 and the other who locks herself in the room and games all day. Alex likes this idea for a podcast so she starts interviewing Josie and things start to get really weird until Alex finds herself becoming part of this true crime podcast that she is meant to be documenting instead. This was a really good thriller. It did the job I wanted it to do. It kept me engaged. It kept me turning the page. I really wanted to know what was going on who to trust, what was true. I liked that we were getting both of the women's perspectives. I will say though that it hasn't really stuck with me after reading it. I think there is a reveal at the end that I see what the author was trying to achieve with it but I don't think it quite paid off for me and it kind of just left me with more questions at the end rather than a oh my god that just happened. What? I was kind of just like, wait, what? And then I had to go have dinner and I forgot about it. So a fun time, but ultimately a bit forgettable. Next I read Ink Blood Sister Scribe by Emma Tors, which was an interesting one for me because I really liked the concept of this book. It's the execution of it that didn't work for me. So this book is a fantasy mystery in which we follow the perspectives of three different characters whose stories intertwine about halfway through the novel. Two of these characters are sisters and they come from this family who collect magical books which have been written in blood and which do very things. One of these sisters guards this library, takes care of the books. The other one left home pretty early, I think at like 16 or 18, and hasn't been home since. And then the other perspective is from a guy who has the ability to write these magical books. In these three separate perspectives, our characters all find out something that has been being kept from them and they join forces to get to the heart of this mystery that's driving the book. I find that so difficult to describe to you there. The main plot of the book doesn't start until halfway through I would say. I think the first half of the book you're just getting to know these three characters setting up the world and that's too much time. 50% of the book shouldn't be given that much time to that. It was hard to get through especially the first 30% of the book. I had 
had to really stick with. It was slow going. I did like the characters, but honestly, this was a book I was reading with my sister-in-law and I think that's the only reason I didn't DNF it because I knew that I had to read it. But I think I would have if I didn't have that. I'm glad I didn't because when we got to the second half of the book, things started to move a bit quicker, but I still felt like it didn't make any sense in my head why it took so long to get to this point. There was a lot of faffing about, there were a lot of scenes that I don't think needed to be in there, didn't change the trajectory of the plot really. The concept of this book is fun though. I like that each of the three characters had different abilities when it came to these books, but overall the execution of it just did not work for me. And honestly, I'm just struggling to remember. Oh wait, I do remember how it ended, but it was just all very okay. I thought it was just okay. The next book I read was Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands. This is the second book in the Emily Wilde series by Heather Fawcett. In this book, we follow Emily Wilde, of course, and her colleague slash boyfriend, Wendell. They, along with another colleague and Emily's niece who has been assisting her in her scholarly endeavours, head off to, I think it's, it's Switzerland or Austria, somewhere there, because they're looking for a door to Wendell's realm. Wendell is a fairy. I think that's maybe a semi-spoiler for the first book, but not really because you, you learn pretty early on that he's a fairy. They're looking for a door for Wendell to get back to his realm. This book was good, not as good as the first one I would say, but I still really enjoyed it. It gave me the cozy vibes that I wanted from it. I liked that in this book there was more of an emphasis on the romance between Emily and Wendell than in the first one. There's some really cute chapters in the middle of the book that really deliver on the romance. And I really liked the third act of this book, what Emily has to go through. We see more of the Fey realm, of course, but I feel like Emily had more autonomy in this book than she did in the first one. I'd say it if you've read the first Emily Wilde and you liked it, you'll definitely like this one. I think what this book was lacking in comparison to the first one was the secondary characters. Yes, we have Emily's niece and their co-worker who I did enjoy, but I think the first book was so good because there was kind of this found family aspect to it with um, the village that they find themselves in. It felt like the village was way more of a family unit in that one. The village in this one doesn't play that big a part really. There's less going around talking to the villagers, which makes sense because the subject matter that they're researching doesn't really rely on the villagers as much. That was the th one of the things I enjoyed most in the first book and I missed it in this one, but still good and I'm excited for the third one. Next book I read was an arc that I read through NetGalley. It's being published on the 8th of March, I think, and it's a story spun in Scarlet by R. Dugan. This is a fantasy book that takes place in a world in which stories and the telling of stories produces magic in the world. There are people called story crafters in the world who can tell a story and then varying degrees of magic will come into effect depending on their power depending on the story told but at the time that this book takes place story crafters have lost their ability to tell the endings of their stories which means that they have no power anymore and our book follows one of these story crafters called Audra who is desperately trying to tell stories but just can't find the endings until she runs into a farmhand called Jake and she finally manages to tell a story with an ending they basically have to go on a quest to find out how this has happened, what is giving them the ability to do it and no one else. And on the way they start realising that both of them have missing parts of their memories which is leading them to believe that there might be more to this than meets the eye. I was intrigued by this book because of the concept of it, the idea of magic being produced through the art of telling stories and that being taken away in the sense of not being able to finish a story was really interesting. Ardugan really excelled in the story aspect of her book. I think she had a really strong concept but it was just too long, too much focus put on the world building and details of description, not enough time put into character development, relationship development. One of the main aspects of the story is a romance between the two characters and that's not just a romance aspect. Their romance does directly affect the plot of it but it felt like it came out of nowhere, it wasn't earned. I felt like there wasn't any chemistry between the two. Sometimes the dialogue felt really clunky and a bit cringe, especially in comparison to her descriptive 
writing which was really well done although at times I did feel that it verged into cliche territory which was a bit annoying. I think this book could have been way stronger if it had just been edited a bit more, shortened. It's 510 pages and it does not need to be that long. It doesn't. I think from about the 50% mark I started skimming through and I was completely understanding what was going on even with skimming. I hate skimming books as well. I do not like doing it but I was just so like okay okay I know where we are. I don't need to be reading all this. So it was overall just a bit disappointing. Finally the last book I read was Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. This is a cowboy romance romance. I think maybe the first cowboy romance I've ever read and I've been listening to country playlists ever since. <laughs> I'm not really a country girl but maybe I am now. Maybe I need to get some cowboy boots and a hat. So this book is about Clementine who races horses for a living and Luke who owns a bar in a small town where Clementine is from. When Clementine has an accident on one of her horses she finds herself too scared to get back on a horse so she goes back home to this small town Meadowlark where her family runs a ranch and reconnects with Luke who just so happens to be her brother's best friend. When Luke sees Clementine again he's like wow you're fit but he says no you're my brother's little sister. It's against the rules. That's kind of the tension keeping them apart but of course they succumb to their attraction to each other and what follows is a kind of angst-free, drama-free romance novel. So if you're wanting something angsty this is not it. There is no third act breakup. The tension of the novel is the fact that they're keeping it secret and basically just getting Clementine back on the horse. I don't know why I keep calling her Clementine because she's called Emmy throughout the book. This was fine. I feel like that's just been my whole February. February the fine month. Fine February. I started this book and I had fun at the beginning but it just quickly became a bit old. I don't like third act breakups but I do still want there to be a little bit of angst. Just a little bit to like keep me on my toes you know. But there was nothing really driving it for me. It was just all a bit too nice. Do you know what I mean? I think maybe that's just not what I was in the mood for. It was just a bit too nice. The spicy scenes were good. I liked the spicy scenes <laughs> and I liked that Luke kept calling her sugar. Sugar? Is that is that an accent I can do? Sugar? Because this is my first cowboy romance. <laughs> I just find myself reading in my head in a like southern accent but it was making me read slower because I was taking so much time in my head to go through each line being like well howdy darling sugar but I couldn't stop myself from doing it and the whole time I just kept picturing that scene that everyone's obsessed with Pedro Pascal where he's like why don't you ride a real cowboy sugar? How would you like to ride home on a real cowboy? I got a six pack of cold ones all night so my room is out all night so you can scream my name as loud as you need me too, sugar. I'm sure you know what scene I'm talking about. <laughs> so that was distracting, but that's on me. <laughs> It has given me the country bug though. Like I said, I can't stop listening to country music and I want to read more cowboy romances, which is good because the second book in this series comes out on the 5th of March, which is really, really soon. And I think I, as much as this kind of underwhelmed me as a whole, I just love romances. So I think I'll just read it and still have a good time. That's the thing with romance. Even if it's an underwhelming romance, I probably still enjoyed it enough to keep going. Do you know what I mean? It fuels me. So that's everything I read in February. I didn't read very many books that were like memorable plot wise which is disappointing. I have started a book which I think could maybe be a f I don't want to jinx it by saying it. Should I jinx it? I don't want to. It could be a five star but we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know okay. <laughs> Stop looking at me like that. Please let me know that you had a better reading month than me. Give me some recommendations. If you read anything mind-blowing this month please just let me know. I need I need it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing upcoming week. See you in the next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.